Day 7. Reflection. I woke up, laid in bed, and a smile grew over my face. Once upon a time, there was a boy. This boy played music, played sports, played with his friends, played outside, and he was free. He was able to do everything that he wanted to do. But then, one day, he bumped his head. It wasn't the hardest bump on the head, but the effects were life-changing. He was no longer able to play the sports that he once loved. He was no longer able to play music because sounds were too loud and music was painful instead of pleasant. He was no longer able to be outside because it felt like stepping into a war zone and he was no longer able to stay around family and friends for longer than a minute because it was too overwhelming. Because of this, he searched for answers. He read articles, he listened to other people's healing stories, and he tried to figure out if there was any sort of pattern to what he was experiencing. And there was. He realized that the activity in his gut was actually causing or influencing the activity in his brain. Because of this realization, he realized that he needed to heal his gut. And so from that moment on, he set out on a mission to heal his gut. He did many things to heal his gut. He took probiotics, he drastically changed his diet, he took antimicrobial herbs, and he even ingested turpentine, which his mother had previously tried to hide from him in fear of her son taking in a poison. And though while he didn't die from ingesting turpentine, and after a few months, he was making progress, he wasn't where he wanted to be. He knew he had a long way to go. In a few months, he would be going back to school, which brought him excitement, but also fear. And so he knew that he needed to do some serious healing before he went back and embraced the potential stresses of going back to school. And that is what led him to fasting. Day one, setting off to sea. It's been 12 hours since I ate. My goal for the fast is three days minimum. If I make it to that, then I'll go to seven, and then we'll reevaluate. I feel anxious, sensitive to sound. My heart feels overworked. That happens a lot, and it makes me fear for my health. Midday, I drove to Whole Foods, feeling awkward. I can't stop focusing on them. Mood is meh. 3 p.m., time to juice. I feel myself wanting to eat solid food. I can't stop thinking about food. 5.30 p.m. Feel pretty tired and just blah. Feel not so good in the head. Kind of lightheaded. Heart kind of palpitating. That's kind of scary. 7.45 p.m. Did a water enema. Definitely feel more relaxed, but still kind of off. Low energy, kind of weak. Can't focus very well. Hopefully I start to feel better tomorrow. Day two, temptation. I didn't want to get out of bed this morning. My face feels pretty lifeless. I'm bloated. I'm reading Wherever You Go, There You Are and Buddha's Brain. I am refamiliarizing myself with mindfulness and its importance. I have felt more unconscious lately, like I'm on autopilot. 
food affects my consciousness because food affects my gut and my gut affects my brain. I feel low energy. Well, I could do things, but I just feel cloudy. I'm thinking about food. I can't stop thinking about food. I'm craving junk food. Not feeling felt or listened to is a huge pain inside of me. That misunderstanding does stem from a thread of unconsciousness. The reactions and words that bubble up from the unconscious or the subconscious mind, the ones that make me feel misunderstood, they're damaging, yet they don't have to be. A dual awareness, knowing that my reactions and their reactions aren't necessarily true portraits of who we are. The unconscious runs the show. So how do we control our subconscious? It frustrates me that I can't overcome the automatic behaviors that are carried out when I'm in a less conscious state. It's like how you can't see the world as a colorful, happy place when you're feeling gray and depressed. Listen, just listen, don't try to change or fix me. I don't want or need that. I need you to listen. Feel what it might be like to be in my skin. Feel how I would feel without putting a label on it and dismissing it. I hate that. I hate it. And it's the unconscious, I know. That's what makes it so much more complicated because I know that I do the same thing too. So how do we control our subconscious? 3 p.m. Did another water enema. Not as much came out as yesterday. I'm still really bloated. Chest doesn't feel as tight. Thinking about food. Feel just blah. No life in me. I told my mom I was fasting. <laughs> the emotion on her face looked as if I just told her I was gonna go jump off a bridge with no water beneath it. Really questioning what I'm doing. Voices of my mom and commercials telling me to eat, eat, eat just rolled through my brain. The voice of my mom, and even more so, the expression on her face made me feel like I was doing something stupid and dangerous. 8 p.m. Slight increase in mood and energy. Slight increase in motivation. Maybe I'm turning a corner. Day 3. Turning a corner. I bought ketone testing strips last night. This morning it showed 40 milligrams per deciliter. Ketosis is starting to kick in. If I cross my leg, it tingles. That's interesting. Do feel slightly weak. Less anxious though. Mood is better. Finished editing a video. Weigh in. 129.8 pounds. Still slightly bloated. Did a workout. Actually felt pretty strong. 1.30 p.m. Drank my juices. Getting lightheaded when I stand. Feel relaxed, yet kind of trippy. Memory has been kind of funky. Not thinking about food as much, that's for sure. 4 p.m. Went for a short walk with dad and actually didn't feel too bad. Head feels a bit weird though. Definitely feel more energy and strength. Mom wants me to eat. She doesn't understand. 9 p.m. Tested for ketones and strangely there were none. Maybe I need to simplify my juices. That's, that's kind of weird. Three days of juice fasting complete though. Let's push for seven. Day four, strength. It's sunny out. Ketone test, 50 milligrams per deciliter. I really wanna get into a deep state of ketosis. I'm gonna extend the dry fast window today. Weigh in, 130.2 pounds. Weird, yesterday I weighed less. I feel more motivated. I have strength and energy for sure. Growth hormone? My voice is faint and weak sounding. I drive fast until 2 p.m. Had some pain in my shoulders. Hit some golf balls around my yard. Definitely ain't no Tiger Woods. 3 p.m. Feel more content, more loving, more happy. Doing another workout. My heart does beat really fast and hard, which is kind of concerning. Hmm. 5 p.m. Mom's face still wants me to eat. Ketone strip showed 100 milligrams per deciliter, moving deeper into ketosis. It's interesting, our thoughts and perceptions, shaped by so many influences, but what is reality? What's the truth? You can tell me I'll die if I do something, but then how come another person says that I won't? And in fact, how come this other person says that I'll become more alive by doing that said thing? Experience. I trust experience. Why should I listen to you if you've never done it? I shouldn't, and I won't. So why do we think we know things. Why do we do that? What is reality 
And what are thoughts? Some might say thoughts are the activity of the brain. What is reality? What is the truth? The story? Or the sensation of the wind as you fall? Day 5. Deep Ketosis Couldn't fall asleep for a while. It was frustrating. I woke up at 2.30 in the morning. All I wanted to do was sleep. Thoughts quickly arose saying that if I didn't fall asleep, I would break the fast. I went downstairs to the couch. Luckily, I fell asleep for 3 hours. So grateful that I fell back asleep. All thoughts of wanting to break the fast had passed. Weigh in. 129 pounds. 1.30 p.m. Ketone test. Super deep ketosis. My body is eating itself. Energy is decent. I notice a significant reduction in inflammation in my body and brain. So grateful that I got some sleep. All I've had today is water so far. I'm basically doing dry and water fasting with intermittent juicing. 3 p.m. Drink my juices. My mental focus is good. My drive to create is increased. I feel more creative. I feel more clear. I feel more playful. I feel more like a kid. Day six, clarity. I slept much better. Ketone test, deep, deep ketosis. Breath tastes kind of nasty. My belly is so flat. My gut isn't bloated at all. This is how it should be all the time. I'm gonna miss that. Weigh in, 126.4 pounds. It feels so good to have this lack of inflammation. I feel like a little kid in that regard. Loose and agile. Sometime in the afternoon. I spent a lot of time going through the books in my closet. I only ever read a few of them. I think it's time to clear some space and let them go. I downloaded an app that tracks your books and tells you how much you can sell them for. It feels good letting go of physical items and possessions. Dry fasted until 2.30 p.m. I've been getting lightheaded when I stand. Listening to calm Celtic music puts me in a trance. It's starting to feel a little bit worse, like my body is running out of resources. 3 p.m. Water. And once I got to days 5 and 6, I knew that I would finish the 7. I don't feel like I'm dying. Although, c conversations with my mom sparked an expression from her that wasn't all so sure about that. But I told her, I wanted support, not fear. I wanted her to say, you got this. By the end of talking with her and expressing this desire of mine for support, she did say you got this. Although I'm not so sure that every single part of her believed what she was actually saying. 4pm. I can't say I've ever felt the way I do right now, ever, in my life. This feeling of emptiness in my body. It it brings a patience, a relaxation. It brings perspective. My mom's fears of me fasting sprouted from her subconscious. Her face expressed how she felt before her mouth could even start to open to say words. Is this reaction of fear and worry actually a part of who she is? Is it a part of her subconscious and underneath level? Mom, thank you for caring about me. But I guess I'm just wondering how much of our fears prevent us from seeing the world as it actually is. But then again, how can we really know what the world really is when we are the ones perceiving it? How often does fear cause us to not do something that might actually be good for us? How often does fear hold us frozen when the best move on the board is to move? Where do these fears even come from? How do we control our subconscious? What is the subconscious? How do we control that? Day 7. Reflection. I woke up, laid in bed, and a smile grew over my face. I made it to the last day. I brought to mind all the benefits that I had been feeling. I felt light and loose, clearer and calmer. I began to reflect on how far I'd come. I pushed through those first few days of feeling awful. I pushed through the voices that were telling me not to, mom, but I just knew that I had to keep going. I felt peace, I felt clarity, I felt relaxed, I felt free. My memory was enhanced. I was remembering little details that usually were lost in the fogginess of my brain. My whole body felt shredded. I could see my abs. Most of the time my gut was so incredibly bloated and, un and uncomfortable 
that I'd question if I was a boy or a girl. Cause like, maybe I'm pregnant or something. All that discomfort was gone though. So many issues were just gone. As those thoughts came and new ones came in, my smile faded. I knew I had to eat again. And while yes, I could fast again in the future after gaining a few pounds, I felt like the moment I put food in my mouth was like saying goodbye to a beloved friend, whom of which I had only just started to get to know and like. It was a bittersweet feeling. Would I recommend that you fast? Well, I'm not a doctor. Well, a real doctor. You are responsible for you. And while no, I cannot give you medical advice, what I can give you is my story. It's scary thinking about eating again, because I know I will instantly take on a new form, a different state of mind, a different state of being, a different lens will control my perception, and I like the way I feel right now. More peace, more clarity, more inspiration, more love, more good. I want to hold on to it, because as my mind state is altered by the consumption of food, I become someone else. And that someone else isn't always the most loving, the most caring, the most calm, the most creative, the most inspired. And I just want to be the best version of myself possible for the sake of me and for those that I interact with. So it's really hard. It tugs on my soul. And I guess the reassuring thing is that I can always come back. Like the verse you recite each morning, or the awareness you choose to settle into, or the home that's warm and brings a sigh of relief. I can always come back, though for now I must leave, but I will be back, there's a lot more to see. Wow, let's do that again.